Hey, this is Evan Sutton. I'm an instructor of electronic music production and sound design at DubSpot here in New York City. And today we're gonna to talk about drum synthesis using Ultrabeat in Logic Studio 9. Now I've already created a new software instrument track and we're gonna bring up a new instance of Ultrabeat from the drop down menu. Now for this, we're gonna use one of the stock Ultrabeat kits. It's called Classic Electro Kit. You can find it under drum kits in the drop down menu. Now, Ultrabeat essentially has three sections. The first of which is the mixer section. You can change the volume of the sounds. You can mute or solo them as well as move the panning. You can also see which key on the keyboard corresponds to that sound. There's the synthesis section, which is unique to each of the different sounds. We're gonna go more in depth with that in just a moment. Then there's also the sequencer section. Now, each Ultrabeat stock kit comes with a handful of its own sequences. To turn the sequencer on, you can click this button here and let's listen to what they've got for us. Pretty special. So let's isolate this kick drum and see what we can do with it. It's a pretty standard 808 style kick drum. It's originating from a sample. Now, Ultrabeat gives us a choice from its handful of audio sources as to where the sound comes from at its source. And this one's using an audio sample, but let's try and recreate it using the phase oscillator. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this rim module, which we're not using. I'm gonna rename it by double clicking. Let's call it Sweet Kick. Now I'm gonna go through and turn off pretty much everything except for the audio source. You can turn off mostly everything in Ultrabeat by clicking on its name. Band 2, Band 1, Filter, and so on and so forth. Now, all we're left with is the audio source, and let's switch it to the phase oscillator. I'm going to give it a quick and dirty sequence here that we can use. And let's listen to what this sounds like. So the most obvious thing that we can do with it is change the pitch. This phase oscillator has its own volume knob as well as a pitch slider. So let's drop it way down. Like way down. I'd say that's about where we want it to be. It's gonna give us a nice body for the kick drum, some of that good deep bass. The next thing we can do is change the duration of the sound, more specifically the decay. Now, the way we do this is by modulating the volume of the oscillator. Ultrabeat has a choice of four envelopes that we can use. You can bring up and edit any of them by just clicking on its corresponding number. And one of the great things here is that if you hold down the mouse button, it's gonna highlight where this particular envelope is being used or routed. Under mod for this volume knob, it's already rooted to envelope two. Now we can bring up this menu by just clicking on it. And we can use any one of these, but let's just use envelope two since it's already there. We go to envelope two. Now when we select something to be modulated, any parameter, it's gonna give us one of these blue sliders. Now this slider is gonna dictate the range of modulation. Let's listen. In order to zoom on the envelope window, you just click the word zoom and drag. Change the attack. This number right here is always gonna tell us the overall length of our envelope from the beginning of the attack to the end of the decay. I think that sounds about right for now. What we're really missing though is a good, strong attack transient. We want some nice punch to the kick drum. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna modulate as we did with the volume, we're gonna modulate the pitch of the sound. Under mod here, we're gonna choose envelope one and we're gonna give it a range of a few octaves. Now let's go to envelope one, let's check it out and see what this sounds like. Now, that's a little much for what we're trying to do here, although it's a cool effect. Let's make it a little bit quicker and a little more subtle. Change the attack. You can change the slope of the envelope. Just nice and smooth. 
That sounds pretty good for now. Let's see how it sounds with our snare drum. We can turn it up using the voice volume, which essentially acts as a master volume for each individual drum sound. All right, now let's examine this snare drum. It's also being created with a sample. Let's listen. What we have here is another simple 808 style drum sound. Now I'm gonna do the same thing we did with the kick drum and turn everything off but the audio source. Let's use this claps module and change it to, you guessed it, sweet snare. And what we're gonna do here, much like with the kick drum, is we're gonna turn everything off but the actual audio source. Okay, Let's switch it over to the phase oscillator, and we'll give it a nice little sequence to work with. Let's listen. Turn it up a little bit. Not very snary at the moment. I'm okay with the duration for now, but let's change the pitch. I'm going to drop it a little bit lower. And to create a nice attack transient, let's use the same principle that we did with the bass drum, but use a different modulator. Okay, so under mod here for the pitch, we're going to choose LFO1. Give it a nice big range of a few octaves. And on the LFO here, we're going to turn the rate all the way up to 100 hertz. We're going to select a waveform here somewhere in between a sine and a square wave. Under cycles here, we can change it to about 30. This is how many cycles the LFO moves for each note. Now for the ramp knob here, this is going to control the attack or decay of the LFO for each note. We're going to give it a bit of a short decay. And let's see what this sounds like now. Using an LFO as opposed to an envelope on this one is going to give us a bit of a dirtier, punchier transient that's more indicative of a snare drum. Envelope 2 is already routed to the volume of this oscillator, so we can change the duration. Just shorten it a little bit. Now the great thing about these modulators is that when you move any of these knobs, it's going to move the range along with it, which is very handy. Okay, so we've got an okay drum sound here, but we're missing the snare aspect of our snare drum. So we're gonna use the noise generator for that. We turn it on like so, and we've got a handful of controls here. We've got the dirt knob, which is gonna change essentially how clean the noise sounds. We've got a filter section here, and we're gonna turn off all the modulators where you can choose the cutoff frequency and the resonance of your filter. For this, I'm going to choose a bandpass filter. And what this is going to do is it's going to give me a range of frequencies around the cutoff frequency that I've chosen in which it's going to pass sound. But above that and below that, it's going to stop it. It's going to give us a nice range for our snare drum. And I'm going to turn down the resonance a little bit. And let's see what this sounds like. Turn the volume up a little bit. All right, so right now, the volume of the noise generator as well as the oscillator are being controlled by the same envelope. Now let's choose envelope one instead to modulate the volume of the noise generator. I'm gonna turn that all the way down so that there is only sound coming through with the envelope. And I'm gonna give it a full range. And now we can change the decay and the attack independently. The resonance control here for the bandpass filter is going to change the bandwidth or the range with which it lets sound through. Change the decay. And now let's change this the decay a little bit. You'll notice 
that we have independent envelopes and independent volumes for each of these audio sources. Now, the Ultrabeat voice volume acts as a master volume and is always routed to envelope four. Now, what this is gonna do is it's gonna let us shape the overall transient of the sound between all of the audio sources. Let's check this out. Now remember, the voice volume is last in the signal chain in this case. So if the envelope decay of the voice volume is shorter than the decay of the other envelopes, then the voice volume is going to take precedence as far as the overall timing of the sound. Now this is pretty good, but maybe there's a little bit too much low end to it. We want a snare drum here that is going to cut through, but also sort of not be confused with a tom sound. So let's turn on the, the filter here, and let's turn on the high pass filter, and what that's going to do is it's going to let us choose a cutoff frequency, and it's going to pass all of the sound above that frequency and stop all the sound below it. Let's turn off the modulator for that, and listen. So this is with. without. And you can use this to taste. Let's see how it sounds with our kick drum. So that's how you make a sweet snare and a sweet kick in Ultra Beat. This is Evan Sutton. You can catch me at suttonevan.com and at Dubspot in New York City. Thanks for watching. Welcome to Dubspot. We believe in providing you hands on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.